Hey, today we're gonna discuss what a differentiable function means. So in the last video, we went over what the differentiability definition is. We know that it's just simply saying the limit as x approaches any number a from the right side for the derivative of a function f should be equal to the limit as x approaches that same number from the left side, so that is from values smaller than a, now, if this condition is true, if this equation is true, then we say that f of x is differentiable at x equals zero, basically. That is the definition of differentiability. Now, I want to give you some examples of, well, some particular functions that are differentiable and some others that are not differentiable. So let's go over, let's say x squared. So if we define a function f of x is going to be x squared. We know, first of all, let's find the derivative. So f prime would just simply be 2x. We can find this using the power rule. Now, we have f, of f prime of x, which is what the definition is telling us that we need to use. Now, what if we try to find these limits, for example, um, at x equals 0? Let's see what happens. If we say the limit as x approaches, uh, this is an arrow, <laughs> approaches 0 from the right side, uh, for the function 2x, remember we need to use f prime, and f prime is equal to 2x, should be equal to the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side for 2x. Now what can we do here? We can simply say that this is going to be the same as if we multiply 2 times a, very, a, very, a number that is very close to 0. So we're going to say 2 times 0, and now this would be a number that is negatively approaching 0, so we're going to say this is like negative zero point uh, zero, let's say, I'm not sure this notation is totally correct, but let's say zero point, um, point negative point, point zero periodic and maybe n, you could say. This should technically say that there is a number n at the end of uh, an infinite amount of zeros. <laughs> so basically what I'm trying to show you here is that to find these two limits and see if they're the, the same, we can simply say that, well, the, this one, since we're going from values greater than zero or uh, that are positive, then we're just simply going to have zero, okay? But now in this case, since we're having negative no a negative number, well, that is also actually going to be zero, even if we have a negative number. Because remember that the limit is just the value that the function will never get to. And even if we have negative uh, negative point zero 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 zero. Well, that's just simply gonna be the number that you're never gonna get to is gonna be zero. Okay, so that is basically what why we're gonna say that this is gonna be zero equals zero, which means that this equation is true. Okay, so we can say that f of x is differentiable at x equals zero. Now this is a differentiable function basically. If you want to see if a function is differentiable, just simply use the, def the definition for differentiability. You create, well, you find what value you want to try. So in this case, we tried with, uh, with zero and you just simply find the limit, okay? Whatever you get. Now, what is a function that might not be differentiable at some points? So let's say now we have uh, f of x is gonna be equal to mm, one over x squared. Now, how can we solve this? Well, first of all, let's find the derivative. So let's see if um, if this function f is differentiable at x equals zero. So we're gonna find the derivative. We can write this as uh, the derivative for x to the negative two power. And now we know how to solve this. This is just gonna be negative two x to the negative three power. And this is just gonna be negative two over x to the third power. Okay, this is how much we get. Now let's see what happens if we try to use the, the, the differentiability definition with this function. So we're gonna have, create some space over here. So let's say we have uh, the limit as x approaches zero from the right side for minus two over x to the third power. And let's see if it is equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the left. Now, how can we find this limit? Now, initially, something we need to do, and we need to actually be careful here with the signs. So let's go with this side first, with the left side. So we know any number greater than zero is gonna be positive. So we can just simply plug in here any number very close to zero that is positive. 
we know that this is basically just asking if you have any number in the denominator, how many times can that number fit into negative 2, okay? And we know that if we have a very small number, and that number is going to infinity or is approaching infinitely 0, then we can fit that number into 2 an infinite amount of times. So we know that this limit would be the same as if we had mi minus 1, remember, because you have negative 2, so basically the division is going, is going to be negative 2 over any number. And remember, that's going to be negative, so we can say negative 1 times infinity, basically. And now what about the other side? Well, let's see what we get. So in this case, if we do the same logic, so if we have a number that in this case is negative, and we plug it in there, we would have, oh, let me do it, so we have negative 2, and now we're going to say, we're going to define any number n that is going to be negative, so negative n to the third power. So on this side, this is just going to be negative 2. Now we know negative times negative is going to be positive, and times negative is going to be negative again. So at the end of the day, we're just going to have negative n, basically. And now in this case, we could technically rewrite this as uh, minus 1 infinity, and this is going to be equal, this should be, well, let's see if it's equal to uh, the limit, we can say now, as uh, n approaches infinity, basically. Uh, no, no, it would be actually 0, not infinity, yeah. I was thinking the result of that is going to be infinity, not n approaching infinity. So n approaches 0, right? Because we have up here that x is approaching 0. And now we just simply said that just to play with the signs, we have any number n that is very close to 0, which is what we're saying in here. So we have the limit as n approaches 0 for negative 2 over negative n, which is the same as if we had just 2 over n. And now we know this is just simply going to be positive infinity. Okay? Now, what happens here? Well, it's pretty cool. We're going to have negative infinity on one side, and this is not going to be equal to positive infinity. Okay? Now, basically, these two limits, first of all, we say that they do not exist because they are equal to infinity. Okay? So these limits go to infinity, and well, also, they do not have the same sign, so they basically are totally opposite, which means that they are not the same. I remember that we only say that a function is differentiable if both of the limits are the same. And in this case, they are not the same. So we're going to say that um, the function 1 over x squared is not differentiable at x equals 0, okay? And that actually makes a lot of sense because remember that if you have a function that is continuous, at a specific point, it might not be differentiable at that point. That's something that happens, for example, with the absolute value function at x equals 0. But if you have a function that is differentiable at any point, then that function must also be continuous at that specific point. And in this case, that point I'm referring to is going to be x equals 0. And f of x is not continuous at x equals 0, basically, because we get an indefinite answer, and the limit would not exist. Or, well, it would go to infinity, and we say it doesn't exist, so it's not continuous. That is basically how all this works, and I hope you're seeing, like, the logic behind all of this, okay? It's, um, these are basically definitions we need to play with, and that we need to understand how we can basically utilize them to understand functions, and understand how functions behave in when they're very close to some numbers, okay? So basically, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned something, and subscribe for more videos. See ya!